Yeah. At least not yet. Probably not. So I've added a few things onto the uh, up onto the agenda. Um, <clears throat> so I, 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 in particular, I have some super happy news. Um, we are scheduled for next Tuesday, April 9th, for our review with the CNCF talk uh, to become a CNCF project. Woohoo! Yep. Cool. So, is, if I recall, that's at the same time as uh, this meeting. So, I recommend that we cancel this meeting for next week. I would tend to concur. I've actually got an agenda item uh, to just that point. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah. Would someone be willing to share the agenda? I'm on a much smaller than usual monitor. Okay, I guess I will share. One second. I'm on a cell phone right now, so you can get a cell phone. Yeah, it's worse. Um, worse than a cell phone. No, no, no. Then a small monitor, the laptop monitor is. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask what you were on. <laughs> yep, cool. If, oh, by the way, if folks could add themselves to the agenda, or to the attendees list. I'll put the link into the chat. There we go. Cool. So <clears throat> if folks could go ahead and add themselves, I know we have a bunch more folks on the call that have added themselves so far. Awesome. So do you want to get going then, Frederick? Sure, let's get started then. Okay. So first, uh, events. So the network service mesh day is now as now done. So the next event is today. Um, and I believe the event starts at around 1. Uh, and I believe the talk starts at around 2.30. So we're going to have around 90 minutes to go over a variety of network service mesh topics at, at the Intel uh, out-of-the-box developer meetup. So if you are in town and you have time, uh, feel free to stop by. Before we go ahead and clip the service mesh day out of the agenda, how did that presentation go? That went remarkably well. I have a number of people who I've been following up with, uh, and I'm going to start funneling them towards the uh, towards the community. So I'm pretty happy with the overall with the overall result. Um, so one of the unfortunate things was they were running out of time. So the amount of time that I had available to talk about network service mesh was cut almost in half. So uh, so I wasn't too happy about that, but uh, I basically gave the rundown as to what we're doing and uh, afterwards got swamped by a number of people who are um, sort of recognized that uh, the L4 through L7 use cases uh, don't solve the L2 or L3 and that the L2 and L3 are just as important for solving certain use cases that they have. So, uh, I, so I, I'll start, I'll start funneling them towards this so that we can start, so we can find a way to, uh, ultimately the most important part is that we, is that we work out how to build alignment with, uh, groups like Envoy and so on. So we, if we build that alignment, then I think we'll, we'll have an easy way to, uh, to, move the larger community towards the uh, towards the direction that we want for for these specific use cases. Cool. Cool. So let's see, we have ONS starting tomorrow for three days. So that'll um, so we have three uh, three talks that um, that are going to be given by network service mesh or people in the community. So do we, I don't think we have to, uh, we, we, we should put the, the times on this as well. I think that'll probably, that'll probably help. That is probably a good idea. The other one I will point out is that I think if we go to the events page on the network service mesh site, I think we do have the times. So if we go take a look at 
Oh, yeah. perfect. That's even better. Yep, they do have the time. Are we missing a talk? Uh, possibly. Yeah, because we have three and there's only two there. Yeah. Yes. Could we? Could we go ahead? If someone could please push a patch to fix that. And finally, um, according to Prem, and I don't know if Prem's on or not. Um, I do, it doesn't look like he is. Uh, there's supposed to be a, a, a demo of network service mesh at the, oh yeah, it's listed there next, the Elephant demo booth. So at the Elephant booth, you should be able to see a demo as well of, of network service mesh. Cool, awesome. So I need to follow up with them today to make sure that uh, all issues that they've been having have been resolved so we can get it out the door. Um, all right, and then the next event that we have is April 17th or 19th. We have Container World 2019 with Prem giving a talk. Uh, we have KubeCon EU that's uh, coming up and uh, we actually now have, um, let's see, we, we have the, do we have talks on that already, Ed? Or like what's we going on? We have two that? talks, I don't know if they've hit the schedule yet. Uh, as soon as they hit the schedule, I'll add them to the list. But we have an intro talk, and then we have a building NSM solutions talk, which will sort of walk through how easy it is to build network service endpoints. So there will be two two talks that we that we should uh, be a part of. Um, we also have co-located FIDO mini summit, um, and the call for paper closes this Friday. So if you want to put something in the FIDO mini summit, uh, this Friday is the deadline. Yeah, and, and please do. Uh, it would be great to have some talks from network service mesh people. Uh, bonus points if they're not given by me. <laughs> yeah, and, and in the last final event, I, I really enjoyed the, what came out of that one as well. So we have people from the CNCF in the last one who presented the, uh, the CNF test bed, and we had uh, a lot of really great topics. And so uh, it's, it's worth going to it if, uh, if, you're, in, if you're able to come earlier. Um, let's see, we also have... ONS Europe coming up in Antwerp. So call for papers is currently open, closes in June 16th. Um, and so we'll, we'll, we'll see what's gonna happen with that. Uh, we have MEF 2019 in Los Angeles and we have KubeCon North America at the same time. <laughs> and so um, we'll, we'll probably, and, I believe that there's some people from the community who are going to go to MEF 2019, so we'll, we'll make sure, and, and are trying to give a talk, so uh, we'll make sure that they're well prepared. Um, and so, um, also the call for paper for KubeCon opens up on May 6th. And with that, let's hit the main agenda. We have CNCF proposal next next week, April 8th. So do not come here. If you would like to listen in or participate, go to the CNCF, uh, to the CNCF talk. Um, and we should make sure we have a link there uh, that we can point to people and put it prominently on the top. So that way people uh, know where to go. As soon as we finish this meeting, I think that's next up for the for putting on the agenda. I just didn't want to confuse people by putting it there yet. Perfect. Uh, and one thing I actually will point out is the proposed slides to present. I have a link to those. If folks could try and get me some feedback in the, uh, in the next day or so um, on those, that would be super, super helpful. Um, I'm incorporating a little bit of feedback, but we're probably going to get those finalized and put into the actual deck sometime this week that we're going to present. It, it's basically... Um, a little bit of song and dance, a very, very abbreviated version of Sarah's story, um, and that kind of stuff. So, um, and then talking a bit about the community, et cetera. So feedback on those would be super, super welcome. Well, I will definitely take a look at it as well. Cool. <clears throat> so in, other happy news. Uh, so we, we talked briefly about NSM in various Kubernetes environments, right? Uh, particularly public clouds. And um, we've been looking at GKE, AKS, and EKS. Um, it would be, you know, if folks know of other public clouds we should be covering, um, that would be super helpful. I know, I, I, I know somebody has mentioned maybe the Alibaba public cloud. 
Um, is that something you might be able to help us, Sean, in getting figuring out how to plug into? Shai? I think you're muted. Yep. Say that again, please. Uh, I, I, I know that Alibaba is a big public cloud provider in Asia, in China. Yep. Um, yep. Is that something you could help us getting plugged into? Um, because I'd like to uh, also run there. Sure, definitely. I can uh, try to fetch some information, take some information about that, and to see whether, like, say, I don't know whether they provide a free, like, say, those kind of services. Um, well, the, the thing, the good news is that, that once we've become a CNCF project, we can get some resources yep. from CNCF to pay for some cloud time. Um, oh. and it's entirely possible. I know that um, most of the public clouds also donate substantial cloud time to CNCF for use by CNCF projects. And okay. so uh, Alibaba maybe do something similar. Um, I'm just, I literally don't even know how to start engaging with running stuff there. So if, if you could help us figure that out and maybe help get, get some of the stuff running, that would be great. Sure, sure, definitely. I'm going to get our uh, information about public clouds in China. Sure. Yep. Um, and and one, other, one other quick thing I just want to mention is I'm told that, that as of this morning, um, the, the, the guys have actually gotten stuff working on GK, AKS, and EKS. And so we should have PR shortly to fix the last few niggling problems there. Um, and then having done that, <clears throat> um, then hopefully we're going to get some CI running on those very shortly so that we can run our CI across those public clouds as well. Okay, that's fantastic. Yes. Uh, it turns out the, the underlying problem was deeply, deeply, deeply embarrassing. Um, I had screwed up the handling of routes, um, and that was what was causing the problem. Ah, these things happen. <sighs> they do, they do. Um, <laughs> this is why we're building network service mesh. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it turned out it was, it, was, it was a little bit of a chimera of a problem, because normally, uh, if you have screwed up the routes when you do a trace in VPP, you get to the IP lookup node, and then you get error dropped, and you look at that and go, aha, I have a route problem. Um, but as it turns out, the VXLAN in-cap node has an optimization where it does the route lookup itself. Um, and so we were hitting that, that in-cap node and then getting dropped, and it's like, what happened? <laughs> this is not where you expect to hit a routing issue. But it was. So. Uh, uh, sorry, Ed. Uh, I'm just curious about, uh, so any requirements? to run uh, for public cloud to run in this, let's say, uh, what kind of, kind of things do they need to support? So the, 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 we're trying to get to the point where it will always work. So think of the things in layers, right? Which is we're trying to write NSM in a way where it will always work. Now, as you, you probably well know, if you want to be high performance, you may have to do more, right? Um, and so, but we all wanted to make sure it, it always, always works. Um, so, for example, like one of the things we had to fix for the GKE case is the fastest way to get a kernel interface into VPP is with vhost devnet, uh, with dev vhostnet. Um, and it just so happens that the normal out of the box um, Linux that the GKE is running on doesn't have dev vhostnet. Now, there's no reason it should, right? So it's not like it's a problem on their end at all. So what we had to do was to check for its presence. And if it wasn't there, then we had to fall back to um, the second fastest way of doing it. And, you know, and so my guess is that there's a really good chance that it will just work on Alibaba's uh, managed Kubernetes offering out of the box. But if it doesn't, I expect the kinds of things we'll need to solve will be um, those kinds of uh, little, little issues that you run into when you go to a new environment. Um, so the, the goal is to, to try NSM and get NSM so it works out of the box on Alibaba's uh, Kubernetes offering. Okay, gotcha. Um, another one that we may want to try to take a look at, because if you look at the largest ones, you have AWS, uh, Azure, Google, Alibaba, et cetera. Uh, IBM is pretty huge as well, and they do have a container. Uh, they do have a, what they call IBM Cloud Kubernetes service. Mm -hmm. So uh, it may it may make sense to reach out to them and see if they, uh, if we could potentially do an integration on that as well. That's a super good idea. Um, I will see if I can track down Jason Hunt um, while I'm here in ONS. He's from IBM, and he's their um, their TAC rep, their, their their TAC rep to LFN. 
he might be a good place to start pulling that thread. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. So it, we, and, and I, I think that with those, those, those will wrap up the largest ones. Yep. <clears throat> Does anybody know anybody in Oracle? I know the guy who's part of the Java spec at Oracle, who's on the, the name. Uh, I could reach out to him and see if he remembers me. <laughs> <his name. laughs> <He's laughs> pod guys, we'll see. Um, but yeah, because uh, the, the, the basic goal is we want to make sure that we, we just work out of the box on any Kubernetes you run us on, um, particularly on the public clouds. So, cool. <clears throat> um, awesome, so that, that's all been super, super good news. Um, all right, so upcoming release dates. So Nikolai provided these, we had asked about them last week. Uh, we previously agreed to these, but it's good to get release dates front and center in people's minds frequently. Um, and so April 23rd is when we plan on pulling the NSM v1 branch. So that's when we're, by that point, we should have the features we want for our 1.0 or 0 0.1 release um, in place. Um, and then <clears throat> The designated release date is April 30th. And then we do our dot one release um, on May 14th. So we have it in place for KubeCon. And essentially, you know, think of it as the 423 date, we should have all the features in. By the release date, we should have, you know, really beaten on it, fixed bugs, increased testing, et cetera. And then um, on the 514 date, um, we essentially will take any pending fixes from the actual release and incorporate those and continue to add additional testing. So from 4.23 um, until 5.14, we'll probably have quite a, a focus on testing um, as well as we go. But please note that it all gets pulled onto a branch, so master will continue to be open continuously for new features. Cool. Um, anything on the dates? I think the dates look, they look reasonable at this point. Yep. Okay. So Actually, um, I, I see what they're doing. So they're, they're creating V01 uh, branch and then they're creating a V010. I'm not, I'm not sure that a V01 itself, because what's the difference between V01 versus Zero one zero one zero. Oh, so, uh, so branch versus tag. I see. Yeah, tag makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, it, it's a branch versus tag thing. <clears throat> um, cool. Tagging is important, and and then, then we get to go through the joy, and I do mean joy, of figuring out what our release process looks like in the course of this. Having having written the tooling for release processes across multiple communities, that is always interesting the first time. So, cool. So we should, we should see, make sure this all gets documented so the people coming on um, understand yeah. how it works. Well, in principle, we want the release to be automated. Automated releases tend to work. Um, unautomated releases tend to be an unending bag of pain. Yeah, I agree entirely with that. Cool. All right. Okay. So, um, Nikolai, Nikolai is named the next release doodle. Yes, so we have a doodle poll for names. And it looks like Andromeda is currently in the lead, which is actually what I would choose as well. Um, so Andromeda, it looks like, is in the lead. Uh, I think there was a big move towards doing this as constellations. I think constellations are a great choice for release names. Um, <clears throat> Um, do folks have opinions? Are we okay with Andromeda? Um, do folks want to speak on behalf of other names? Ariadne? <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Is, is Ariadne a constellation though? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> Hang on, let me see. Let me do a quick look up. Um, it appears, come on, Google, you can do better than this. There is something called Corona Borealis, which is supposed to be the crown of, um, 
of Ariadne, I think. True. But that's that's the wrong letter. It's the wrong letter. Um, so we, we Aquila, I think, was the, the next one. But um, so it looks like we're going to go with Andromeda. Is everyone fine with Andromeda? I, I voted for another, but I also like Andromeda. Yeah, so. let, me, let me look up really quickly the mythology behind Andromeda. Really quickly. Okay. Okay, cool. So, um, fine. All right, so I think we're <clears throat> We're on to Andromeda then. Awesome. So going back to the agenda. Um, that's cool. Awesome. Do folks have anything else for the agenda today before we conclude? I know it's been a little bit of a light meeting because everybody is traveling this week. Um, by the way, I wanted to mention if uh, if there is someone else that uh, observes some instability lately in the project. I see some yeah not very consistent behavior in the integration tests. And okay, I was wondering if it's only on my side. <laughs> so let's talk about that because I know that Matthew Rohan hit something yesterday morning when he was trying to run Vagrant. That may have been a yeah exactly yeah. With memory li with memory limits, um, Andre, do you know a little bit more about that? I know you were helping. Out. memory probably with CPU limits uh, could be related. Uh, in one of the previous commits, we had it with CPU limits defaults for the data plane only. So I'm not sure. And uh, some some someone uh, somebody experienced uh, issues with starting an SMD because of this. Not sure. Probably we need to remove these uh, CPU limits and add them only in case of a cluster. I really need them. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so okay. So it may be. So maybe the CPU limits are are tweaked in a way that's a little bit rough for more limited for for environments like Vagrant. Uh, do yeah. You, I know there are some issue. There's an issue Matthew had opened, Radoslav. Um, could you take a look at that? If you're seeing the same thing that he was seeing, um, if you could chime in there, and if you're seeing a different thing, if you could speak up, because we definitely want to stamp out any instability and get some testing to prevent it. Um, but yeah, it would be good if you could, if we could capture that. Because if, if, yeah. you're, seeing, if you're seeing instability, even if it's just you, um, it's probably something in your environment that somebody else is going to have in their environment. Right, so if you're seeing instability, let's definitely get that chased out. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah, I because basically I have tried even the integration tests, even the ICMP example, and um, they're not uh, how to say it, they're not consistent with their behavior because one may succeed but the other may fail, and yeah. So let's so to be clear, when you, when you say uh, when you say CPU limits, like is the pod refusing to start, or is the pod starting and like uh, is it failing after afterwards? Is this for me yeah. or? Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I haven't played with the played with the CPU limits on my set. I'm, yeah. Well, even without even without changing the CPU limit, like is, is the pod just refusing to start? Like, um, it keeps crashing for a couple of times. Then it's it's in a, a running state, and but for example, the ICMP exam, the IC, ICMP checks are not uh, succeeding. Which, which okay, so which which example yeah. is so which pod is crashing? Um, I have to check. Okay. I, be so, I believe so, I have, uh, yeah, I have you, deleted the environment. You gather up all that information. I've seen your issues. You write excellent, write excellent bugs. So if you can mm -hmm. gather all that up and, and either add it to the one that Matthew opened, if, it's this, if it looks like the same thing or open a new one, if it doesn't, uh, we can go ahead and, and chase that down together. Um, 
because again, we want to make sure that we, we catch any of that and get it beaten out because part of the whole value proposition is making sure this stuff runs universally. And so we want to make sure it actually does run pretty universally. Okay. Thanks. Anything else that folks want to bring up before we conclude? All right, thank you guys. Um, so I will see you at the talk call next week. Um, super excited about that. And hopefully by the next time we meet as a community, uh, we will be a CNCF project. Talk to you guys later. Yeah, bye-bye. That's great to hear. Bye. Bye, bye. cheers. Bye. -bye.